Valmethus Cooking is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty studio electric and gallery installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware. Welcome to Falmouth is Cooking. I'm Gail Blakely, your host for this half hour. We're trying to hold it to a half hour, we'll see. We usually have a lot to talk about and a lot to cook, so I think that we will um, pretty much uh, try to cook along and, uh, and talk this time. We have a great show. We have a wonderful idea. Uh, we have a wonderful product. We've got some delicious food, and uh, I want to start off with introducing you to the fresh, hot off the press, uh, Tommy's Place Cookbook. And to talk with us about this, about the cookbook and the process, uh, I have Esther Ann Price, who is going to join me up here. Uh, and she's just been doing, come on up, just been doing a great job with uh, chopping some cheese because the cheese was already cut up, so we didn't have a grater. But Esther Ann does a lovely, lovely job with mise en place. Uh, you've worked with me at Highfield, and yes. uh, I'm pleased to have you here. Welcome to Falmouth is Cooking. All right, so Thank we you. are going to talk some about the Tommy's Place Cookbook, talk lots about the Tommy's <laughs> Place Cookbook, but I think before we get started, let me just mention to you that we're going to be doing this in sort of in tandem. I'll be asking Esther Ann some questions. She'll be talking about how it came to be, telling us a few stories. I could tell some stories too as the editor of the recipes. Uh, we, have, uh, we have lots of memories over the past year. And uh, I also will be making two dishes from the cookbook. A couple of uh, different recipes from the book that I chose for really their comfort food value. It's cold out. We had some snow yesterday, and I thought it would be good to cook a couple comforting dishes. So uh, we are doing home fries, loaded home fries from Devour Artisan Eatery in uh, Falmouth on Main Street, and also uh, from the East End Tap, which is in East Falmouth, uh, we have Linguisa Mac and cheese. So I'm going to be putting that together, maybe pointing out a couple of things, but as we get started here, I guess the first thing to do is to say once again, thank you for coming, and tell me how you got the idea to do this. Well, how did this start? Thank you for having me, Gail. You're welcome. I, I, I appreciate this, and I appreciate the plug. <laughs> okay. Um, the idea actually came to me in a dream. I woke up one morning and I said, wow. What if I went to all the different restaurants in Falmouth and asked them for a recipe, um, I'd be able to put together a cookbook. Uh -huh. so, to raise funds for Tommy's Place. Right. Okay. right. Um, Should we tell people what wanted, Tommy's Place actually is? Yes. Tommy's, let's start with that. Well, yeah, let's start with that. Tommy's Place is a vacation home for kids with cancer. Uh, a gentleman named Tim O'Connell. Uh, started Tommy's Place. It was his idea. He came up with it and it came from him anonymously donating a week's vacation on Martha's Vineyard uh -huh. to a family from, um, it was, I think it was Boston, it was either the floating or one of the hospitals in Boston. Okay. It was either the floating or the children's hospital. He had, Tim has always been a very um, giving man and has always donated time and money to mm -hmm. hospitals, especially children. 
and he had um, he had some homes on the vineyard, and one of the vacationers backed out at the last minute. Mm -hmm. So he said, "I've got a week. I've got a house. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give it to a family who could probably use a rest." Uh, we had idea. a good time. Great idea. So Tim contacted the um, Boston Children's Hospital mm -hmm. and t contacted the hospital and they found a family and he anonymously took care of everything for them from the boat ride over to the food. Mm -hmm. um, the family ended up, when they came home, um, sent the anonymous donor care of the hospital um, letter with pictures thanking him so much. Um, the grandmother said she hadn't seen her daughter smile in ages. She hadn't uh, seen uh, the young man Griffin smile in ages. Wow. And the mother wrote a little letter talking about how much fun Griffin had. Uh -huh. And it was such a relief to be away from the hospitals and doctors. Um, and what so, more beautiful place than the vineyard or downtown Falmouth, too. Yes. So, unfortunately, um, Griffin passed away not long after mm -hmm. returning from the vineyard. Mm -hmm. But the thing that stuck in Tim's mind was his mother, Amy, saying that she wished she could do this for other families. Ah, okay. And that was kind of the last push that Tim needed to get Tommy's place going. Mm -hmm. um, he had had his eye on the El Martin mm -hmm. and was able to finally come to a deal and buy it and then start renovating it because it was in horrible shape. Okay. And Tim's not a person that asks for help. So for him, it was a, a really, um, he had to really step out of his comfort zone mm -hmm. and start asking people for help. Mm -hmm. um, he put up a GoFundMe page. It got some results. And then he started really reaching out, and the money just started to come. Interesting. The money came. Um, construction people came. Painters came. Isn't that the town, wonderful? That's the terrific. town of Found yeah. just really... And actually, money came from all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, he put together a really nice Facebook page and kept up a great dialogue and gave a lot of credit to people who would allow their names to be used, mm -hmm. gave credit to them. And slowly but surely, the house started taking shape because it had been vacant for 12 years. So oh there was a lot of brain damage and oh, I mean the place was like Highfield was yeah it was a disaster oh, it was a mess. disaster yeah. that, could I mean, be condemned yes very much so mm -hmm. very much so I'm and stop you here just for one second okay just want to um, let you know both of these recipes this is for the home fries but both recipes uh, will be on the screen uh, what I've done is slice the potatoes mix them with some spices I did uh, some turmeric some parsley Sorry, not turmeric, um, parsley's here. Turmeric and uh, uh, garlic powder and salt and pepper and a good two teaspoons of paprika. That's what mm -hmm. makes it so red. So we've got a white onion, not a red onion is the recipe called for. Um, I simply prefer cooking with a white onion as to a red. And uh, mixed it all with some olive oil. This is gonna go in the oven for about 20 minutes. And uh, when it's crispy, we're going to bring it out and finish the dish and sample it. Okay, okay so back great. to you and Tim. Okay. Um, so, I mean, Tim is a force of nature, and he's got unbelievable drive and determination. I first saw an article in the paper in 2018 which explained what had been going on, and I just thought it was an amazing idea, uh -huh. and having been sick as a child, mm -hmm. I kn knew, knew what, that was like. what it was like. And, yep. and what a wonderful thing to give a family respite from hospitals and doctors and bring joy mm -hmm. into their lives. Mm -hmm. So I called him and I explained to him that I didn't have money, <laughs> so I couldn't help him on that end, but I did have time and talent. Mm 
mm -hmm. and that I would help him and do anything I could. And that you knew a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Not enough. I knew some people. But I, um, we talked and we finally met, I think we finally met sometime mid-2019. Mm -hmm. And so this is slowly, before pandemic, yeah. Before pandemic, I mean, yeah. before pandemic. And then slowly but surely, the more we talked, um, the more things that I did seemed to fit in, in with what he needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I started really working with him in um, 2020 and helped with the, you know, the house and mm -hmm. organizing, purchasing some of the items that were in the house. Mm -hmm. Um, and then later, towards the end of the year, in November, I woke up one morning and I was like, we need a sustainable fundraiser, mm -hmm. something we could sell on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I woke up from the stream and it was like, a recipe book. Mm -hmm. Why don't I approach the restaurant in town and let's put together a recipe book for Tommy's Place. Just Falmouth. Just, just Falmouth, Falmouth restaurants. Just, right. Just, just a because. Great idea. Really great That's idea. That's where we, we were. So I went and um, my first phone call was to Karen Ronaldo. I had met her briefly at the Falmouth Road Race in mm -hmm. 2019, I think it was. And for some reason, I had her sign. She did the poster for the road race that year mm -hmm. in honor of Tommy, mm -hmm. Tommy Leonard, who mm -hmm. Tommy's Place is named after. Okay. Um, and for some reason, I didn't have her make it out to me. I just had her sign it. Mm -hmm. And that poster now resides in Tommy's Tavern okay. at the house. Good. Good. So I knew there was a greater purpose for that poster than being hung in my house. All right. And here we and, have and, Mr. Tommy. Yes. Here we have him right there. And okay. Cookbook is dedicated, this is your quote. Mine. Cookbook is dedicated to all the children and families who've already visited Tommy's Place and the, to those who will visit in the future. Uh, celebrates the lives of the angels who did pass through Tommy's Place doors and those who never got a chance. Ooh, gives me chills. This cookbook was made with lots of love for all of you. Esther Ann Price, so there is. Um, this is my copy, uh, and uh, uh, we're going to be selling, talking about where we can buy them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but let's get back to your story as we back in. So I spoke to Karen and talked to her about doing some illustrations for the book, and she was on board immediately. Mm -hmm. And she has been my champion through the last two years and really helped She's out. She's just terrific. Um, Karen is a, um, she's, a uh, she's local and she's an artist, but she is um, famous way beyond Falmouth and Massachusetts mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, her art, beautiful mm -hmm. artwork. Um, then I called Tim and he said, sounds like a great idea, have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. You did. I did. Sort of. I, sort of. <laughs> yeah. I also knew at that point that um, I was going to approach you, Gail, mm -hmm. to do edit the mm -hmm. recipes mm -hmm. after working with you at Highfield. Mm -hmm. I, you're absolutely the perfect person to do that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> now she's talking about doing another one in the, for the Centerville um, area, and uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, it. so you got uh, me on I board. Got, mm -hmm. So everybody's on board, and then I realize I'm going to have to pay for this somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't pay for, I can't sell it first. I got to pay for it first. Mm -hmm. So I decided to approach the both retail and commercial businesses in mm -hmm. Falmouth. Okay. And, and that's all of our sponsors. Yeah. Right, all of our sponsors, and that idea came to me in the shower. Okay. And um, great ideas, dreams, showers, there you odd go. places. There you go. And I approached all the sp I sponsors and explained that I was going to do it differently. I'm not going to do it as you normally would do a sponsorship, where people are designated into categories by how much they mm -hmm. give. Mm -hmm. I was just going to take it, and regardless whether it's a dollar 
or a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, everybody's just going to be listed in alphabetical mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets so the same a, weight. A lot of sponsors. So About how many would you say we have? Um, Ten per page, so yeah. 30, thirty sponsors. Thirty almost sponsors. as many sponsors as recipes, which wow. was amazing. Wow, good. And the amount—I mean, the amounts that came in had me in tears wow. at some of the places because the. This town is just such a wonderful town. It's got people who care, people who give. Um, you're you're just great. It. You're proud of it. I'm, pr I, I'm, I'm very proud to call Bamath home. It's the first place I've ever lived that I really feel like it's home. That's great. That's great. So we got that together. And then COVID struck, so right. getting recipes, uh, the money came in fa quicker and easier than mm -hmm. the recipes. Mm -hmm. um, but then COVID hit, and you know I felt terrible for all the restaurants because they were short on help, they were short oh. staff, they weren't sure if they were going to be able to stay open or not. Right. Right. They were, I, everybody was scrambling, and everybody wanted to put their head under the sand and yes. the ostriches at that point. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Very true. And the last thing on most people's minds were giving me a recipe to put in this cookbook. <laughs> right. Um, and then unfortunately, in the midst of all this, I also got sick. Mm. So it just seemed like it was one black cloud after another. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But thankfully, yeah. Um, I had met Russ Pelletier at a benefit for Tommy's place, and we were talking, and he said, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Mm -hmm. I picked up the phone, and I <laughs> said, Russ, help. Yep. And he was amazing. He stepped up to the plate. Um, I don't know if most people realize it, but before the pandemic, when I did the initial list mm -hmm. of the restaurants, mm -hmm. there was between 102 and 112 and I restaurants was amazed. I in was amazed. Falmouth. Just amazed. I met with, um, with Esther Ann and Russ, and I couldn't believe that there were that many. But then I began to think about how large Falmouth actually is and said, okay, you know, that's, that's true. And out of that, I'd say we got, what, um, 50, oh, 50, yeah. 48, 47, 48. So almost 50% right. of the restaurants were which, able to come through, which is remarkable, which, especially that considering is, pandemic times. It is. Yeah. It's truly amazing. And uh, I owe a great deal of that to Russ. Um, Who is a realtor in real life. Right? Yes, he is a realtor <laughs> in real life. Um, and he knows a lot of people. He's also very involved in the Falmouth Walk. Mm -hmm. He, the running club. It's linguisa yeah. macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. uh, from East End Tap Tea Ticket Highway, East Falmouth. Chefs are Paul and Ellen Pendleton. And I am uh, sauteed some linguisa, which is one of our local ingredients. Uh, but uh, we're able to get it in all of our markets, which is terrific because we get a choice even of brands. Mm -hmm. And I am uh, sauteed that with just a tiny bit of roasted red peppers, which you can buy already uh, cooked, uh, roasted, and just uh, take a piece off of one of them and put that in, in this, which is going to give it a nice pink flavor. I chopped it a little bit, and as I bring this to the boil and let it simmer, we're going to add some cheese. This is also a restaurant-style way to make this macaroni and cheese. I think it's yes. really cool because we are making really just one serving. And, uh, and this is, will come in very handy for people who, who cook at home. I'm adding some white cheddar that Esther Ann meticulously uh, chopped up for us. And, and Gail always had <laughs> me doing the mise en place at the cooking classes. <laughs> she likes the way her, I chop things up. <laughs> is, uh, is enough to uh, leave mirepoix being the tiny little dice of uh, certain vegetables uh, for stocks and for most dishes. Uh, you can see that this is thickening up here nicely. Mm. So I added about a cup and a half of cheese to this, letting it melt. And then what I'm going to do is you could stop here 
you just turn this off and one of the things that uh, you could do is not finish it off until you're actually ready to eat. So here we have this coming to a nice simmer. Cheese is melted and I'm going to put in six ounces of cooked pasta. And let's get this. Would you put that in the sink for me? Thank you. All right. So all we do with this is coat it. And what did they say? They said, why don't you read that to us, what oh. they said about uh, this particular dish, because I think it's, it's worth hearing. Uh, we chose to share the linguista mac and cheese because kids love it. Although we offer a kid's mac and cheese, they favor the linguista <laughs> mac. It's so yummy, kids have requested it sent air mail. <laughs> That's cool. a story for another day. I'm going to have to get Ellen yeah. to tell me that story. Yeah. Yeah. You really want to hear that. Okay. Would you put right. that a little stir for me, please? Sure. I'm going to get a spoon to taste. Looks good. Looks very good. It smells good, too. So okay. let's just see how this is. Mm. Is there anything more comforting than macaroni and cheese? I don't think so. I don't either. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off and uh, we'll talk a little bit more and then we'll take a look at what's going on in there. All right, so we are going to set this aside for right now and check on the, uh, oh, the potatoes. Finish it off. Um, finish it off. I've got the yeah. breadcrumbs. Okay. And I think um, what we'll be doing now is taking our potatoes out, taking a look at them. Ooh. Nice. Would you shut that? OK. Nice. So this is. Uh, this beautiful color yes. stuff from with turmeric and uh, paprika and garlic powder. Now you could put raw garlic in this too because you're cooking the right. onions. Um, I'm going to want these to get a little bit crispier. So what mm -hmm. I'm going to do is actually turn the oven up to four and a quarter, uh, and uh, then give this uh, just let me give it a quick taste and see if it needs salt and pepper. But you can see that it's pretty much cooking. Mmm. Good. I want to get it a little crispier. Yeah. And I'm going to add some ham to this. One of the things that they mm -hmm. say yep. at the very end is make your own. So we're adding some cubed diced ham that I had sauteed. Just a, a wedge of Black Forest ham from, uh, from the deli counter, actually. So I'm going to add that and get that a little crisped up. And, and is that what they have to say? Is it, that yeah, it, I think the note that um, the owners and chefs, Agnes and Hollis Hirschfield, wrote, Tommy's Place is a gift to this town and to children, and we are honored to be a part of this amazing recipe book showcasing so many wonderful local restaurants. Wow, that's I, nice. I think they really sum up this whole mm -hmm. project because I, uh, my initial thoughts was I, I wanted it to be from Falmouth to Tommy's place because mm -hmm. that's where it is. And I wanted to get the whole town involved and once again, this wonderful town stepped up, came together, and as a result, we have this beautiful cookbook. We do. Yes, we do. You know what I'd like to do is I'm going to let this sit, like I said, and then we'll finish up our um, our potatoes, our okay. loaded home fries. But why don't you tell us a little bit about each of these really nice pictures um, that I think give it, give Tommy's place a real feel. So uh, okay. see well, what you Tom can do with that. Tommy's place. Um, the original Tommy's place has um, eleven rooms. And I can't remember how many bedrooms. But uh, artists donated their time, came in, painted, 
pulled together designers, and each designer had a bedroom to do. And this is from the game room. This um, is a carousel horse that Tim got that Robin Pearson painted. Wow, oh, pretty. And they were voted, Tommy's Place was voted a top charity for 2022. This is the music room in Falmouth. Mm -hmm. This is part of the dining room in Falmouth. This is some um, a school children got together and did these bears with little t-shirts <laughs> um, and gave enough for all the children so they were at least 52 Wow! because one of the things that Tim wanted to happen is that if one child gets something every should. child come and get something mm -hmm. so every family is mm -hmm. treated equally um, that's um, one of the walls upstairs in Falmouth. Mm -hmm. This is one of the rooms in Falmouth. This is Danny's. This is Danny's room, and Danny um, was also an inspiration to Tim, um, along with Sawyer, uh -huh. um, and the Sawyer family. Uh, Danny Sheehan and his family. Um, Danny was supposed to be the first child to stay in the house, mm -hmm. and. He was able to visit it, but he was too sick to stay. And oh. he, unfortunately, he passed shortly after. And this is... But he at least had a good time. He did. He did. And he, ra he himself raised a lot of money for his room. Really? Um, yes, with the town of Marshfield. Um, the town of Marshfield, I get the sense, is like Falmouth in that I they, so. they will pull together behind a family yeah. and behind a cause. This is the giant chessboard that's outside. Yeah. This is a painting of Wonder Woman that's at the Centerville House. <laughs> I like that. Because again, each each room has a theme, or has been um, quote unquote bought for by a family in somebody's uh -huh. memory. Uh -huh. The rooms sponsored. Yep, that makes okay, sense. Okay, some yeah. of the, some of the rooms have been sponsored by families, um, and then these are more. Um, these are the stairs going upstairs. Mm -hmm. There's a, this is the living room. It's the fire pit outside. Mm -hmm. Another painting from wow. Centerville. These are hobby horses outside by the pool. Um, what a wonderful vacation spot. Oh, oh it is, it's perfect. This is the arts and crafts room. Um, one of the children did a paint, did a wow. drawing. A house for family and love. And that's what everybody who says. That's wonderful. Does. And this is, I believe, there's a local designer who did uh, wristbands with a Tommy's Charm that's um, sold at Celebrations oh. downtown. Okay. So we've got stores. Um, yeah, let's talk now about it's holidays, it's December. Um, great uh, idea for gifts. For, yes. um, for people who don't know what they want to buy somebody, but I think that uh, um, this is a particularly um, appropriate gift for this time of year. It's sort of yes. a gift that keeps on giving yes. because 100% of the, um, oh, okay. the money that comes in um, goes to uh, Tommy's Place. Yeah. And now we have a Tommy's place here and also one down Cape a little bit in Centerville. In Centerville. And I think we'll probably talk about that at some point, yes. um, perhaps later, if not on another show. And I think that um, this is a great gift. Um, not only does it showcase all of the restaurants in Falmouth who graciously contributed during a tough time uh, but also it uh, it just uh, is beautifully put together we have we were able to get from most of our uh, restaurants their logo mm -hmm. and uh, I think that to have 50% of our local restaurants able to contribute something to this I think is is really quite remarkable and I think that's the job that you did so I can't say enough good about him. It, it's, he's just, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. He sort um, of looks wonderful. <laughs> People can does. look wonderful. He um, looks, uh, as does Tommy. Yep. And Tommy, 
and Tim actually met in a restaurant and Tommy was asking Tim, Tim was sketching out on a napkin his plans for Tommy's place mm -hmm. and you know Tommy said what are you doing and yeah, and Tommy was relentless <laughs> until he got answers. He got what he wanted. So um, Tim, Tim told him, and over time they became very close. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim learned his history. Yeah. And <laughs> Tim decided to name Tommy's place Tommy's place, so that um, uh, Tommy, who had been orphaned as a child, would have a forever home. Cool. And That's lovely. And unfortunately, um, Tommy did not make it to see Tommy's place, his, his home finished. Um, but t uh, 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 I mean, there's just not enough I can say about, about Tim O'Connell. Um, he's a caring, giving, so, and people respond to that, and that's why there's mm -hmm. been so many mm -hmm. people who have donated so mm -hmm. much and mm -hmm. who donate time and again. Um, we have sponsors that come back every year, every month. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it, it's it is really amazing. amazing. Uh, I think that Russ wrote a really nice little um, piece here about Tommy Leonard's um, role, yes. Tommy Leonard's uh, filet of soul that are rolled up with wonderful Ritz crackers. Uh, and what Russ says is, in 1993, the Falmouth Road Race printed a cookbook with recipes from world-class runners, the mayor of Boston, Ray Flynn, and one from Tommy Leonard. And Russ says when he first read through that booklet, he was shocked to find a recipe from Tommy, and he knows firsthand that Tommy had uh, a little trouble making toast, but was very good at setting off uh, the smoke alarm. Sounds like someone that <laughs> I know, um, like me. Uh, so was this really his recipe? We'll never know, but Russ thought that it would be a nice entry. So here we have it, along with the um, the painting of Tommy Leonard. And I was looking for a photo, but I think what we should probably do right now is sample this gorgeous macaroni and yes. cheese, which um, I oh. will make um, a little festive for the holidays. Uh, the paprika, I, you put extra paprika mm -hmm. in the panko crumbs, some butter. And we are going to just eat right out of the pan and okay. give this a little and shot. The other people I don't mean to, are not neglected and don't mean to mention toward the end, but we also, Russ also got together a group of volunteers to mm -hmm. test the recipes. So all, most of the, anything that didn't look like it was going to be just real mm -hmm. quick and easy to do, anything that looked like it's going to take time, um, has been tested by a whole group of wonderful people who volunteered and did test the recipes mm -hmm. and gave us feedback and gave Gail the feedback she needed. Over and over again. To and I was, I was pretty um, pedantic, <laughs> I guess was the word, about what I wanted and how I wanted it done. And I would say this oh my doesn't God. sound like this can be in any way, um, in any way, shape, or form a real recipe, but uh, we got through them all, mm -hmm. and uh, and we, we really did. learned. Isn't that nice? That's that really nice. So this really could good. made in a and that's a, quick and easy. Uh, yeah, real easy. Uh, made in a um, a skillet that could be an oven-proof skillet. Mm -hmm. and just go right in and get reheated. Yeah, and there you have it. That's really perfect. Nice. Yeah. Good. Absolutely okay, perfect. let's get this out now and okay. finish up. You know what you could do for me? Yes, ma'am. That would be great if you would. Cut let's up the get avocado. A, a cut up the avocado. Here's the knife. Got it right here. Okay. Okay. I got this the other day so that I knew it would be right perfect. for us. And there we go. Okay, so if you want to, spoon. spoon's right here. Let me let me wipe it off for you here. Okay, and we'll move this over. Yeah. And I'm just keeping this on low. And if you would dice that, because what we're going to do is we are going to mix the home fries uh, with some cheese. Okay, let's move and this. And right here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. The whole thing, guys. 
the whole yeah. thing, please. Yeah. Um, and remember, we put some ham in that too, yeah. so that it. But you don't have to. Just leave this right there. Okay. Beautiful. Wow, this is a perfect one. Good. All right. So. These got a little crispy, which is what I wanted. I just love the color on these, Esteran. Don't you think this looks oh, really beautiful? Oh, beautiful. And the recipe calls for tossing this in a bowl. Um, while potatoes are roasting, your cheddar cheese transfer, add cheddar cheese, toss, plate potatoes into a bowl of your choice, and then top with avocado. So I'm going to do this the easy way rather than dirtying another bowl. I'm going to take this and just sprinkle, I think it's about a cup and a half. That little beeping that we're hearing is my induction stovetop here telling me I have a stranger on it. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want the cheese to melt. And it will dicing up the avocado. Good. With your dicing skills. <laughs> okay. So this is a dish uh, that Agnes and uh, and her husband, I think, serve on a regular basis at the uh, at the restaurant. And she says you can put an egg on it. You could add bacon to it. You could add peppers. You could, you know, really just sort of make it your own. And uh, I think that this looks pretty well mixed. If you're wondering again what the coloring is, it's paprika and uh, turmeric, as well as a little garlic powder. So that just goes into the bowl. Um, transfer. You can sprinkle it with a little more nutritional yeast, which is actually a, a product that you can get in almost all of our markets now. Just adds a little bit more cheesy flavor. And there's the okay. beautiful avocado. Let me turn this off because it's pretty, oh, perfect. Mm. Okay. Power off. All right. Okay. So we're going to plate we go. this up. And once again, I am oh, going to, beautiful. doesn't it look nice? Once again, I'm going to just put this in the bowl. And, oh, okay, okay. yeah, right over there. Thank you. All right. This looks pretty good to me. Yes. Top it with a fried egg or a poached oh. egg. Perfect. Um, I thought that the, the instructions that they gave also is really kind of cool because one of the things they said was to stripe it yes. with a hot sauce which is a chefy term, and that's one of the things about the cookbook as the, as the editor of the, uh, the recipes, I will tell you that we learned about the difference between sweating vegetables and steaming vegetables and learned a lot of very, very specific culinary terms yes. um, that we had to figure out whether we were going to include them in the cookbook or not. And I think, I think we pretty much did, yeah. um, and uh, just got to be a little repetitive. But I think that those are some of the basics that, in fact, you know, just uh, you can never home cooks can never learn enough about some of those particular, if right. I may hear, um, right. particular no. techniques. Okay, let's give this a taste, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some recipes. I think the texture of this, the pota crispy potatoes. The mm. little bit of ham and the avocado. Mm. Doesn't that look like a nice bite? Mm. Good. Whoa. That's delicious. Hot, but good. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Oh, give it, get a bit of hot sauce here. And as my mother said, if you eat it standing up, it just goes right to your feet. So we could eat this whole tray if we wanted to. <laughs> I like but how I your mother will. thinks. <laughs> this would be perfect with an egg on top. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm. Okay. Delicious. All right. So that is our cooking segment. 
So we have this and this wonderful stuff. I think we can just sort of nibble as we go. But I wanted to look through the cookbook and um, just point out a couple of I, what I thought were really different and okay. interesting recipes. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, as I remember correct, if I remember correctly, um, this is um, a couple of a dessert recipe that I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. It was from the service center. Scott Williamson gave us ice cream lasagna, which is just one of these really fun, <laughs> fun recipes that you make in a 9 by 13 pan, you know, when you have to take something to somebody and they have freezer space. Mm -hmm. um, 9 by 13 foil pan, um, warm the fudge sauce and the butterscotch sauce, and uh, unwrap the ice cream sandwiches, which is what it calls for, uh, in a layer, layering, um, put them in a layer in the uh, contain in the foil pan, put in some Cool Whip, drizzle in some of the fudge sauce, the butterscotch sauce, three containers of Cool Whip, one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, I should buy um, stock in it. Three bags of Heath Bar Crunch candy and just layer it all together, put it in your freezer, and boy, do you have a dessert for the ages. Yes. Tommy Leonard came into our lives um, when he arrived in Falmouth, joining my wife Margie as a bartender at the Quarter Deck restaurant. The bond that was created with us was the beginning of a typical Tommy Leonard relationship, one that he had with the whole world. We had many dinners with Tommy, and he was a fussy light eater, but he always had room for a sweet dessert. Tommy was not bashful with ice cream lasagna, and his comment was, holy cow. <laughs> holy cow is right. Yes. Um, so that's a cool one. We have a nice recipe from for cookies au chocolat from Boris at uh, Maison Viat. We have kosher... Um, pickles from the pickle jar. Kuna Messet gave us cons confetti biscuits. Uh, Wood Soul Taqueria uh, gave us a couple uh, recipe, and I think one for the pig candy also from the mm -hmm. tavern. Yeah. Um, West Falmouth Market. Uh, so the Soul Rose I mentioned. Paul's Pizza. I think it's amazing that you guys got a recipe from Falls Pizza. I have been trying for the 35 years that I've been writing my food column mm -hmm. to get a recipe from them, and you guys did it. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, Sopranos by the Sea, Bluefin Seared Scallops, uh, Delicious Baked American Chop Suey. I was toying with doing that. Yes. You could tell I was really in a comfort <laughs> mode here. Quahog Republic, Conference Table, Chappaquay Grill. I think the loaded home fries are definitely something I'm going to be making this yes. winter. Actually, I think I'd like to do this and then reheat them for Christmas Day, for Christmas that's, morning. That's that a good, yeah. yeah. Um, cinnamon apple French toast. We've got some nice, we've got a lovely um, pastizio. Cheddar broccoli soup. We have a little story about that. Baked fish chowder. Um, brown butter miso cauliflower from uh, Charles at, uh, uh, at Sea Salt. And Añejo gave us their guacamole, first time ever published. Mm -hmm. All of that goes to Tommy's Place, and a better cause could not be found. I really no. just don't think there is there is no. anything better for um, a holiday gift. Honoring our restaurants, honoring Tommy, honoring people like you who actually uh, you know make dreams, put dreams into action. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, she waited till she got out of the shower and got dress before she did anymore. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you to you. This thank has you, been Gail. really fun. I think uh, that's us all for us for today. Um, we're going to keep nibbling here because this stuff is really good. And uh, uh, please uh, join us next month in January when we may be playing with a little bit of a different format. But uh, uh, regardless, Falmouth will still be cooking into 2023. And uh, please take a look at the cookbook. Go on Online, check it out, or uh, um, visit some of the uh, the local places that uh, uh, Esther Ann just described. So, thank you.
Vow With This Cooking is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery Installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware.